What's up, what's up, 500K? How you doing, friends? I'm just gonna check over here to make sure I'm showing up. Cool beans. And I'm just gonna watch for comments. If you guys come on live, let me know, say hi. Just so I know the comments are working because Facebook is highly, um, let's see, what's a good word for this? Unreliable <laughs> in terms of showing me the comments. So, uh, so yeah, you could do that and then I won't have to look back and forth between my phone and this and I can give all of my attention to you. So those of you who have not been to any of my lives before, my name is Laura Mazada and I am an Akashic therapist, which means that I've been a therapist for almost 20 years and I'm also an Akashic healer and teacher. And really my mission is to assist people with healing at the deepest, most profound level that is long lasting, permanent healing, okay? And so I do that in the space of the Akashic Records. I do that with Reiki. I'm also a Reiki master and using all of the skills, of course, from grad school and my 20 years of being a therapist, which I continue to do to this day. So I hope you guys are all well and that you had a wonderful weekend. Happy Monday. I am not going to be here next week. I just wanted to let you guys know I'm going to be having surgery this Thursday. So I'm not going to be here next week, but I'm hoping to be um, all well and good for the following Monday. I go here live every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern, so definitely join me. And if you're on the replay, you can type hashtag replay. Today, we're going to be talking about how to have a phenomenal and productive Facebook Live. So I really want to clearly delineate this from Instagram Lives, from Twitter Lives, from LinkedIn Lives, any of those, okay? Facebook is its own platform. Instagram is more casual. I do like going live on Instagram too because it's just a very different feel. To be honest with you, I kind of go with my lives in terms of location based on how I'm feeling, unless it's something scheduled. So if it's something like yesterday, I was just in my pajamas and I did a bunch of card reads and some Akashic wisdom readings um, and downloads on Instagram. I was just like, hey guys, I'm in my jammies. I just thought I'd hang out. I can do that on Facebook too, um, but there tends to be more structure on Facebook and in Instagram, there's a little bit more, um, it's just a little bit more informal on that platform, okay? So today we're gonna to be talking about Facebook Lives in particular, and these are tips that you can apply to anything. You can apply them to any lives you'd like. In fact, having these components is helpful no matter what. I just wanted to give you an idea of the difference between Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives or other platforms, okay? LinkedIn is a little bit more businessy and a little bit more structured. And Twitter is really, I mean, Twitter Lives, they, they don't get as much buzz unless you've got like hundreds of thousands of followers. <laughs> so you can do that for sure. Uh, I just don't think it's going to, to take you where you want to go in terms of marketing quite, or from the beginning anyway, uh, unless it's a platform that you've been building for a while. And I know a lot of writers um, love Twitter. I love Twitter actually, um, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a first line for your business because Twitter, things only last on there for about 15 minutes, right? Facebook has a decent run in terms of being able to hold on to posts and hold on to videos. Um, Instagram's a little shorter. Pinterest is truly the best. I don't really know a lot of people who are going live on Pinterest though. Um, but Pinterest is great because it really assists you with um, increasing your SEOs on Google and getting your visibility just on the internet in general. So, but if you guys have any questions about those different social media platforms, please feel free to throw them in the comments or let me know. And, um, and I'm happy to answer them. But so for today, we're gonna talk about the phenomenal productive Facebook Live, okay? So for Facebook Lives, it's really important that when you go live, you're not just showing up and being like, oh, okay, so what am I doing today? I'm like, oh, hi, how's everybody doing? Um, yeah, so I was just kind of like walking. And you know, people have about a five to seven second attention span when they are scrolling on the internet, when they're scrolling on Facebook, okay? And so you want to, whether we're talking about posts or whether we're talking about a video, you want to make sure that your, your buzz line, your catchphrase is right there in your title, is going to draw people in right away. And you want to do a mix of education and entertainment and appealing to people's values, okay? Because people want to be entertained. They are not going to watch you if they're not getting anything out of it. Yes, they're going to get tips from it, but they also need to see your personality. Okay, you need to show them your personality. And if there is a part of your personality that you're holding back because you think, oh, well, this is public and people are gonna see it, or, oh, so-and-so from college, if they see this, what are they gonna say, right? I really want you to show up authentically because 
that's how people are going to receive your message the most intimately. That's how it's going to have the most change for them and the most impact when you show up authentically. You're selling them a bill of goods and yourself a bill of goods because you're then going to drive in or draw in people that aren't a good fit for you when you're not being authentic, right? When I show up and I still have these nerves behind me and I show up and I still have doubts or I'm questioning myself or I'm wondering, you know, why isn't anybody saying this or why isn't anybody showing up or why isn't anybody responding to this, right? Those are the kinds of people I'm going to attract. The people who are questioning whether or not they can go live. The people who are questioning whether or not they, they should buy a program. The people that are sitting in indecision, right? And you don't want that. You really want to show up very boldly and confidently in who you are. So this may require some work on your part. It may require that you do some of the inner work to get to the point of confidence and solidarity in what you are sharing and offering that they're going to be able to, to really take you seriously, right? And really feel your credibility. It's not just seeing or hearing or reading your credibility, but really feeling your credibility. Like you're saying to them, like I can confidently say to people, the Akashic Records are absolutely the safest place to do your healing work, 110%. I know that with full confidence. So if you don't know what to go live about, it's also identifying what is that thing that I could easily talk about for 20 minutes and literally just talk about it forever and never miss a beat, not have to look at my notes, not really have to think very hard, but I just love it so much and it comes so easily to me that I can just rattle it off. That's what you start with when you go live. Okay, or that aha moment that you had when you were doing your own work or when you were working with a client or this new insight that came forward for you. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Share it. Your live can be two minutes. In fact, people would appreciate you because a lot of people don't have time to watch 30 to 60 minute lives anymore. They really don't. It's actually ideal for you to do 15 minute lives because people want to get their data and get out. They want to get back to their lives. They want to do what they're doing, right? So respect that. Also respect your own energy and your own time and don't make it this huge daunting task. It doesn't have to be, okay? It's literally just you having a conversation with another person. That's how I want you to view it. That when you're going live, you're having a conversation with another person. Some people really like just going live on their phone. Do you see my puppy? They like just going live on their phone so that it looks like they're FaceTiming. Yes, my daughter put stickers all over my phone. Um, but that way it feels more personal to them and then they don't feel like they're going live because it's like, oh, okay, I'm right here on my phone and you can get a ring light. I have one right there, but, um, but I'm obviously not using it for this. But, and the ring light has a phone holder inside of it. So you can put it up right there and then you can pull it up to your face and you can make the, um, you can adjust the brightness of the ring light so it's not like shining and glaring in your eyes while you're going live. You can make it nice and dim, but enough that it illuminates your face. And then you can just chat like this and it's like you're on FaceTime with people. And then they feel like they're having a conversation with you and you feel like you're just having a conversation with one person. And that's how I want you to envision it when you're going live is that you're just talking to somebody, right? Like I'm having a conversation with one person right now. I am talking to you about how to go live and how to make it phenomenal and how to make it productive. Bring your excitement. That means prepare, okay? Prepare for your Facebook Live, not in the way, hi, Darlene, not in the way that you're taking a bunch of notes and writing out a script. I find that to be highly, I find that to not be useful at all, to be honest with you. Yes, you can have a script if you want to. I did it that way at the beginning, but honestly, it feels robotic. It feels robotic to you. It can feel robotic to them. I find it so much better to just have like a random touch points. Like for this, no notes at all. I'm just going off of it because I trust myself. I entirely trust that I'm great at doing lives. I'm, it's, very, it's very natural for me. I'm very effective at it, right? And it's something that took me a little bit of time to cultivate, but that was really just my confidence. It was just like this, there was, this was a new business. It was a new platform. It was a new way of thinking, right? And a way of approaching business in the way that I had done before. And so I had to really understand that and, and really just get, and get into the groove of things. This is why my friends, it can be very, very helpful to create your own private Facebook group. And I know Darlene actually has shared a lot about that and also has an opportunity available for you guys to learn more about doing that, which it's such a beautiful opportunity for your business, but also remember it's for you. 
Because when you're starting to get comfortable with going live online, doing it in a private group where you get to control who's there and you get to control who sees your content is a beautiful opportunity to get started and start to get comfortable and start to connect with some of these people and have a back and forth conversation. Oh, it's this week. Oh, yay, Darlene. So good. That's such goodness. You provide such goodness in that program. Okay, so, so get excited before you're live. I'm not talking about writing things down. Like I said, you can have an outline and some touch points just in case you forget to, to shoot back to it and keep you on track because you, like me, I can go on tangents and just, you know, trail off. Yeah, they definitely feel safer going live for the first time in a private group. I know I did. I know I felt a lot more, a lot safer. And I know a lot of people feel safer going live on Instagram first because Instagram's super casual and just a lot more informal. Um, and so I know a lot of people prefer that too. So you can always practice with that as well. Um, I encourage you not to watch your lives back. What's done is done. It's out there. You need to trust that your message is getting across. You need to trust that whatever people were meant to hear, they will find within your live. Whether you, your hair was out of line, whether you had like a piece of food on your cheek, whether or not you're tired and you yawned three times or you messed up your words or you forgot where you were and you had to go back to it. They don't care about any of it if they hear what they are so eager to receive. When they hear what they're so eager to receive, they don't care about any of the, anything else. They are so grateful to you for offering a free service and coming online and giving them wisdom that could literally be a turning point for them, right? And I like to say, oh, thank you for... <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, Darlene, the sad part here is that that's like maybe not even half, like probably a third of my oral context. I do have a little bit of a problem, but you know what? I use them all and they make me so happy. But yeah, so when I talk about preparing, I really, what I'm encouraging is you guys to figure out what works to get started. My old mentor, my old mentor used to play like party music and dance music and get all jazz before her lives. She's like, you need to do it. That's what you need to do. I was like, okay. I hated it. Hated it. It made me so anxious. And then I got onto this one live and I was just like, I was annoying. I have to be honest with you. Like I got onto this live and I was just like, oh my gosh, all the things. Cause I was like all pumped up. And I'm like, this is not work. Like this does not work for me. For me, before I go live, I center myself. I'll put on like some healing music. I'll say some mantras. I get into my meditative zone. I like to go into my parasympathetic state, my relaxed state before I go live. Cause that's really where I meet my core me. I'm a very passionate person. So I have no trouble getting excited and being passionate for me. It's more of a consistent effort, right? To bring myself to that parasympathetic state. And so for me, it's better to chill myself out and be nice and Zen before I start a live. But you guys might prefer it the way that my mentor did it, which is get yourself all jazzed up, have a dance party and then go live. It depends on what vibe you want to bring forward. But for me to feel really centered and confident, it's better for me to go into that chill state. Okay. And then once you're actually live, like I said, you want to bring a little bit of entertainment in addition to whatever it is you're sharing. So it's important to tell people when you start the video, number one, who you are, even if you've gone live in this group 500 times, tell people who you are. You never know. Somebody can just jump on your live randomly. Anybody can jump on at any time. And that's what I want you to believe. So always introduce yourself because the other thing is if you're doing your own work and you're evolving in your business, your niche is always changing. You are changing. Your desires are changing. Your goals are changing. So it's also good for you to remind yourself, who am I? What am I here for? What is my mission? What is my focus? It's also just really, really good for us to stay on track as business entrepreneurs, as entrepreneurs, right? So Darlene says, so important for everyone to do what feels right for them. Exactly. I used to get ready by doing handstands. Oh gosh, you're so impressive. Now I just do them on the fly between calls, but back when I first started. Oh, I love that so much, Darlene. Using the physical body is brilliant, by the way. Using the physical body is so brilliant. I tell people that all the time with meditation. I was like, dude, it can be so hard, especially if you're really anxious to just slip into meditation. 
you know, do something physical first, move your body, even if that's, you know, singing or doing dancing or breath work, you know, just use your physical body in some way and release some of that energy, you know, before you enter into more of a relaxed state that can be really helpful for some people. Okay. So you're going to open the live. You're going to say hi, ask for engagement, right? Hey, say hi. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what's going on. Let me know what questions you have around this topic. So ask for engagement. You're going to speak to them by name. Hi, Darlene. You know, when they're here, greet them by name, make it personal, connect with them. That's your whole goal. When you go live, if you remember nothing else, it's get yourself into the state that primes you for, for, for where you feel your best and most bold and most confident, right? And you are there to connect. You're there to learn. You're learn, there to build relationships with people, okay? So remember that and allow that to be the only thing you need to focus on if you get overwhelmed with thinking about going live. So you're going to introduce yourself. You're going to engage with people. You're going to tell them what you're going to tell them. So today, what did I say? Today, we're going to talk about a phenomenal productive Facebook Live. And I very clearly delineated that from Instagram Lives, LinkedIn Lives, Twitter Lives, any other lives, right? And why? Okay, so I clarify, I specify what we're going to be talking about. Okay, and then give it to them. Tell them what you want to tell them. Tell them what you told them you were going to tell them, okay? And the more that you are structured by saying, okay, I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm going to tell them these things. I'm gonna tell them that I'm gonna tell them these things. Then I'm gonna tell them the things. And then I'm gonna remind them that I told them, right? I'm gonna remind them that I told them those things. And then at the end, what's the next step? What do you do before you log off of a Facebook Live? Call to action. Always have a call to action. Even if you don't have something that you're necessarily inviting them into in that moment because you don't have a program or this, that, or the other, invite them to connect with you on Messenger. Invite them to ask you questions and tag you in the comments. But make an invitation, okay? They are there because they were drawn to your energy. So extend the invitation. You're inviting them in. You're not selling to them. You're inviting them into your world and you're saying, I would love to get to know you better. I would love to connect with you more, right? And I am opening up space and opportunity for us to really determine what your needs are, what I offer, and whether I can attend to that. And if I can't, I have a huge network of people that I can refer you to to assist you with your needs. Okay, so when you are doing this, you say, okay, I am going to tell you what I'm gonna tell you. So I told you that at the beginning. Then I gave you some tips on that, right? In the midst of those tips, you throw some personal anecdotes, you throw some stories in there. Just like Darlene talked about her story with her handstands, that's how she would get ready. I talked about my story of my mentor. This is what she would do. This is what happened when I did it. And then this is what I do now. So I'm talking about my process. I'm telling a story. And this could be like, oh my gosh, there was one time that I was watching this person live and guess what happened, right? So you're bringing in a little bit of story because they're gonna connect to you more. They know you've actually experienced this and you're actually going through it. So you get it, not just on a, okay, I have the steps and I'm going to recount them to you and hit end, right? But I'm actually going to, to genuinely share my experience with it so that you can develop your own, right? Take some of my tips and then develop your own, okay? So weaving that story in is super, super helpful. I highly encourage storytelling. That's a huge, huge piece for effectiveness in people purchasing whatever it is you have to offer, okay? Let them get to know you inside and out, like the stuff that where you've made your mistakes, right? Well, I don't think there's ever mistakes because I think everything that we do and decide on and, and step forward in action in our lives is in our highest good. We are meant to be doing those things. We are meant to be learning. Um, when we make decisions and we think 
that they aren't necessarily on our highest good or they're not necessarily taking us to the next level. But that's based on our ego's agenda, right? We always know that the decisions we make are lessons to help us move into our highest good. Okay? And then when you invite them in, definitely drop a link for them in the comments. Make sure it's in the comments because if you put it in the description part of your Facebook Live, um, the algorithm is going to work against you on Facebook because they don't want people leaving Facebook. Okay? And then the other thing on Facebook Lives is to tag people. So you can tag up to 25 people, I believe, at a time. You That's in a private group. You can do more than that, probably. If you're going live on your personal page, I think you can do up to maybe even 100, but it could be 50. Um, so, but, but tag people. Tag people that haven't necessarily been there in a while. And don't think that you're just, you know, th there are people that make me crazy. That just, people I've never engaged with, that I've never met that I've never intentionally joined one of their groups and they tag me all the time on my personal page just because they're Facebook friends with me, you know? And it's just because they're trying to get visibility, which I get and I appreciate that. I'm only okay with doing that for people that I know, for people that I've engaged with before, for people I have relationships with. So in your private groups, those people elected to enter that group. So you can text, you can text, you can message um, in the comments people's names, you're tagging them to draw their attention to it. And I guarantee you most of the time for people who have chosen to enter your Facebook group, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this group because it just falls off in the algorithm, you know? And unless they've pinned it, unless they've pinned that group to the side, they're not going to see consistent notifications from it. So they really need to adjust their settings within your Facebook group to be able to see all of your content. So tagging them can just help remind them that you're there. Okay. So those are just a few tips for you. Let me know if you have other questions or if any of these brought up more questions for you that uh, or confusion uh, that you'd like more feedback on. And feel free to tag me in the comments too so that I can answer your questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I actually have a free course called Momentum that started last week. When you register for it, you get the first module immediately. The second module is actually today in about 37 minutes which you'll also have access to the replay on when you register. But this is a free course about generating and gaining, excuse me, and activating momentum going forward in your life. So it's really beautiful for you to um, meet yourself wherever you are in this course. Because when you join this free course, there's four different modules and each module is tailored to specific levels of momentum. So there's going to be um, modules that you're like, oh, I'm like beyond that. I've already gotten that much momentum. Great. Celebrate yourself, right? And then just save that content for if you need to refer back to it, because guess what? We're human beings. The reality is we do get stuck sometimes. We are not smooth sailing all the time. That's what we signed up for coming onto this planet was this polarity and feeling really amazing and feeling like, eh, not so great. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so it's good for you to know that this whole spectrum of modules can serve you going forward, no matter where you find yourself needing momentum in your life. Okay. So join me. I will drop the link in the comments here so that you guys can register for momentum. I hope to see you soon. And I, again, will not be here next week at 1 PM Eastern, but I will be here the following fingers crossed that everything goes well with surgery. Thank you guys for watching and being part of this. Have a beautiful day.